I think I hear the sound of a million aborted babies crying to God Almighty, not to mention the tears of broken-hearted mothers, broken-hearted wives, and in some cases, broken-hearted husbands. Rivers of tears are flowing. Cries are going up to God for retribution. There is a reckoning day. It would not be fair. It would indeed be preposterous if it were not so. There is a reckoning day. What will you do in the end? That's the question. It's a question for the, for the mature, for the aged, if I might so say. Of all people, what will you do? I can think of nothing more tragic. And I see signs of it every day. Old men and old women shuffling, shuffling on the way to eternity without God and without hope. No longer strength of, enough to pick their feet up. Sliding, shuffling on their way to hell without God, without a hope. I know nothing more tragic than that. I have seen, I have known strong men, some of them giants of men, six foot and more. And I'm only a pig in me alongside of them. And I've watched them strong as bullocks. And then the days go by, the years go by, and I see they seem to shrink. And their bodies seem to fall away. And I'm astonished as I look at them, I say, oh, can that be Joe somebody? Can that really be Joe? Is that the man that was so strong, so virile, so full of strength and energy? There he is, bowed, bent down, can't pick his feet up, shuffling, shuffling his way down through a few more months, maybe a year, maybe weeks, maybe only days, shuffling down into the grave. This is the thing that God wants you to consider. This is what God is saying. What will you do? What will you do? In the end, there is an end. There is King Saul, God's anointed king. Holy anointing oil had fallen upon, had been poured upon his head. The great power of God, the great energy of the Holy Ghost had been upon him. He had led the children of God he had led them into battle and into many victories. And in his last days, listen, listen to his cry. Oh, 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 he said, I have sinned. I have played the fool. I have earned exceedingly. And he and his sons were all slain in one day in the battlefield. And the Philistines cut their heads off and stuck them up on the walls of their city. And David sang a song of lamentation over Saul. O oh, ye mountains of Gibor, let there be no rain upon thee. Let no dew fall upon thee, for there on the mountains of Gibor the shields of the mighty were cast away as though they had not been anointed. Saul, come to judgment. There is King Solomon. King Solomon. 
imparted, empowered with marvelous gifts of God. The wisest man apart from Jesus that ever lived. The greatest king that Israel ever knew. Solomon. King Solomon. With all his wisdom, he failed to get understanding. Get wisdom. But with all you're getting, get understanding. He failed to get understanding. He failed to consider to see what would be the end of his life and exploits. The Bible tells us that he had 300 wives or 3,000? 300 wives. Most of them, all of them perhaps, heathen princesses, beautiful women, and he clothed them in marvelous, gorgeous raiment, silks and satin, transparent things, see-through things. And God calls to Solomon, and let me tell you, he built heathen temples for these heathen princesses, for his wives, and he allowed them to bring their idols with them, and he became an idolater with them. The Bible says they turned his heart away from God. And Bible scholars are agreed. There is no evidence that Solomon ever repented. None whatever. And now he must come to judgment. And there he comes. Solomon come to judgment. And he comes with 300 wives in gorgeous apparel, transparent silks, and uh, he looks at them and he, get away, get away, he kicks them, he punches, he shoves them off. But they all say, no, we are coming with you. That's the curse of sin. It will come with you. It will go with you. When you come to death, it will go with you to the grave. It will go with you to hell. This is the cursed thing. Get away. He punched this one, he kicked the other one. But... They know, they said, they clung to him. We are coming with you. What will you do in the end? Your sin, it may be big, it may be little, no matter what, unless you find the remedy, it will cling to you and it will go with you into the grave and down into hell itself. You will never, 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 never through all eternity. It will haunt you. It will burn like fire. It will eat into your, the very vitals of your being in hell itself unless you find deliverance. Thank God there is deliverance. Let me repeat, there is salvation and salvation is freedom. Freedom from sin. I said and I repeat, everybody, no matter who, knows there is a judgment day. Everybody's afraid of it. That's why they want to forget about it and try to write it off. But there is also deliverance from that judgment. In the fifth chapter of John, verse 24, Jesus said this, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation or into judgment, but is passed from death unto life. Now that's salvation. Salvation is a simple, straightforward contract. Jesus is saying, you do two things, and I will do three things for you. You do two things. Hear my word and believe. If you do those two things, I will do three things for you. I will give you eternal life, hath everlasting life, means you've got it now, not after you die. Hath everlasting life, shall not come into judgment. 
Jesus is saying, I will release you from that awful judgment. I will release you from that judgment. And I will transfer you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God bless you. What will you do in the end? What will you do when your strength fails, when your eyes close, when you no longer desire any meat, when you, life has no more pleasure for you, when you come to the end, what will you do? What will you do in the end when the call comes from the Almighty, come to judgment? It'll be too late then, but it is time now. Now is the day of salvation. Let us bow our heads. Our Father, we thank you for the blessed Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, you sent your Son to die for us, and he gave his life that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, I pray that you'll bless this congregation, and if there be any here, Lord, that know you not, bring them to a knowledge of your saving grace, because we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. While every head remains bowed and every eye closed, I wonder what your answer is to that question. What will you do in the end?